Now as we move down in the form, we've got the tabs across the bottom. The service address, that is the address where you're doing work at. That's where the labor is occurring at or um, work is being delivered to. We've got a little plus here, and that can show what equipment or fixtures or cabinets, depending upon your terminology, that they have there. They, If, if you work in uh, air conditioners, you might have the list here and say air conditioners, furnace, um, and hot water heater or something. And so there can be multiple underneath here. There doesn't have to be any, but it can make it nice to group them so you can uh, separate what work was sold to which or what um, items were sold to which e uh, cabinet or something. If I double click and open it, then we can see that the fixtures are listed down here. We can go in and add new ones or edit these existing ones. Uh, this fixture ID, this is very important. You probably want to make this these unique for the uh, for your guys in the field. For example, if you are working something where they've got multiple air conditioners, you might want to call it air conditioner one, two, and three, or air conditioner uh, second floor and uh, first floor or garage or something to make them unique so that when the guy's in the field using them for a drop down, he can use a quick reference and see AC garage versus AC uh, main or something. And rather, uh, as opposed to seeing just two or three ACs, because this is what will appear in his drop down list. The rest of these fields, description, service, um, these are optional fields, make model serial number, pretty self explanatory. Description can be just a further description of um, where the unit is or where the item is. Service, these are defined up under the lists, views um, on the main form, same with groups, and these are your product group types. Install date, uh, if you installed it, you can fill this out and click actual install date. If it was not installed by you but installed by another vendor, you can put in the date and just kind of leave it as approximate and then you just don't check that it was actual install date because that's really kind of meaning that, that it's either the real actual one or more likely you know it's the actual one because you installed it. Um, warranty information, parts and labor warranty, as those are put in, this is the date that it would ex that, that warranty would expire. Uh, and this is useful so that when the invoices are done, if there are uh, warranties involved on the equipment they're working on, it will apply the uh, full warranty on it or a, a labor only warranty on it. Um, reference number, just an informational field, however you might want to use that. Uh, a simple notes area, this information is shared with the handheld, whatever you type in here. You might be putting in that this is in a tight corner, just or or some other note that the that the guy going out looking at it it may help them when they're when they're doing something to the with this piece of equipment to know where it is to help them find it or uh, realize that they need something special about it. The office notes here; these notes do not go onto the handheld; these are just in the office. That may be something that you want to keep history of that you don't necessarily need to go out into the handhelds. The history down here would be as things are sold into this custom system, as it's called up there, they'll fill in here and you'll see the history of all the work done or items uh, stocked or replaced in that. Back to the customer ship to and service address, notice we've got a couple fields in here, basic Know, name, address, phone number, um, country, EDI. If you're using EDI, we've got some EDI tools to help you with, with that in manufacturing. Um, notes, everywhere there's notes. Inactive hides it. Default. That By setting that, only one address can be the default address. If you're using uh, many of the accounting programs out there like Peachtree or QuickBooks, they really only handle one address anyway. So uh, if you're interacting with them, you may have a one-to-one -one relationship 
going here. Tracker can handle multiple bill to and service addresses, but uh, many of the accounting packages cannot. So you might be going a one-to-one -one relation. However, if you have more than one, when only one can be the default service address, and that will be the one that when the technician goes out, opens up the handheld, goes to the invoice, that'll be the one that is selected automatically. He can choose a different address, but that's the default address that would be filled in. A um, couple other fields we've got here is you can check to say that an appointment is required. If, uh, if, if you're in a business that most of the time things you do are you no know, appointments required, you can check this to say this is a time when an appointment is required. If you normally have everything appointment required, you may not need to use that field because it's just assumed you always need it. Um, approximate time, uh, this can be filled into just as a rough idea that, that can load uh, into some tools to help you know about how long is a usual visit to this location. Uh, subdivision and map coordinates, sub these can help just help find where the address is. The name of the subdivision that uh, if, it's a, if it's a home, uh, the map coordinates if you use uh, a particular Rand McNally map system, uh, you can put in here page 35, uh, sector G3 or something. But we also have longitude and latitude. These are geocodes that are loaded um, whenever you save the address. It fills this in for you based upon uh, Yahoo's geocode information. So the more accurate your address is, the more accurate your geocode is. If you don't have an accurate address up here that Yahoo can find, it'll fill this in, but it's going to be less accurate than if you uh, uh, have a fully correct address. Um, and that can come in very, very handy in when you go and look at the scheduling tools. The bill to addresses. Again, you can have multiple addresses, but most accounting systems seem to only want to support one, um, but Tracker could help handle multiple. Um, but again, this information here, fairly basic, name, address, city. Uh, you can set an account code for this, uh, which is used by uh, Peachtree uh, for their uh, addresses. Um, when we save this, you will see that the longitude and latitude will fill in. They're automatically go, gone, looked out, and pulled off of Yahoo. Back over here, one other thing is we have this phone number field. This phone number field will, uh, is popular for use by the guys with the handhelds out in the field because this is something that they can see very easily, whereas they do not see all these contact informations uh, or all the contact information in this tab. They see what's here. So if you fill in this phone number, they will see it when they're out in the field if they need to call the location. Contact info. This information up here is read-only, but uh, it is populated from the information down here. What we've got, we can handle cell phones, emails, multiple emails, multiple phones, web pages, Whatever kind of contact method you want, you can configure all your contact methods under the uh, view list contact methods and set up your own. The main ones here to look at, though, is this one right here with the email where it says send invoice. If you notice, it's highlighted as green and it's a one. That means that that is checked as true. So when we open this up, you will see this field is set as true. And it's set to send, whenever an invoice is completed, through the handheld, sent to the server. If we configure your auto emailer, this is the address that it will be sent to, and the invoice will be sent to automatically. You can set multiple emails. You can set this one to also be an auto email. You can set as many as you want. If you don't set any, the auto emailer will send it to you, and whatever your default return uh, email address we set up for you is.